Well, hello again, and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures Podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm with my wonderful, intelligent, gorgeous, <laughs> very hardworking, wine and dine race weekend loving wife and co-host, Michelle. Yeah, that's for sure about the wine and dine. Thank you for all the sweet compliments. Hi, hey, everybody. Everything is for sure. Everything I said <laughs> is the is the truth. <laughs> As it always is. You should know that about us on this show. We speak nothing but the truth, especially when I'm talking about my wonderful, wonderful wife and co-host, Michelle. Thank you for joining us today. We are recording this episode on Sunday, November 5th, 2023. We hope that you had a safe and wonderful Halloween. Yeah. For those of you, we'll be talking about it quite at length today, who took part in in the 2023 Wine and Dine Half Marathon Weekend. Right. We hope that you had a fantastic race weekend, whether you did the 5K like us, or whether you did the challenge, or whether you did all three races, whatever right. it might be. We hope you enjoyed it very much. Yeah, and glad that the weather was a lot better than a week ago even. Yes. So. We'll cool, be discussing cool. a lot of that yeah. coming up here uh, further on in this episode. Uh, we appreciate that you joined us in the day today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. Also, we are on social media. We are on Twitter X. at Hyperion Podcast. X. Facebook, Instagram, and threads at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us for some good positive Disney energy fun on our Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Yes, and you're invited to share things that we can all celebrate together there. Yes, speaking of sharing things, when we tease next week's episode, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to hope for. A little bit more interaction. Yeah. We want uh, it, next week's show to be very interactive, as we want every show to be interactive, but especially next week's topic is going to be a lot of fun, and I think we can get a lot of great responses to it. So we hope you'll be involved with us, and you can respond to us in any of these ways that we're talking about right now. Exactly. Also, we are on YouTube. If you want to find us there, we're at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. Yes, and feel free to, as Tom said, reach out to us on any of those those ways of t- talking to us. Uh, but also, if you have any questions about anything that we discuss in the podcast, or if you have a topic you want us to cover, Feel free to reach out to us through our Gmail. Yep. Even if you just want to say hi, that is, uh, that is good enough. But we just like to be very interactive with you uh, because we appreciate you so much. Now, before we get into this week's show, you know, we always like to take a look back at the week that was because we are the Disney podcast <laughs> of positivity. And so we like to focus on those positive moments from the prior week. We call it my favorite thing from this week. And when we do this, we always start with Michelle because she's fantastic. She's wonderful. <laughs> mm. She makes a very pretty Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> as you may see in some of our photos we put out there. Yeah. She knows she does the best research. She definitely has the very best tips. One thing she also almost always has is the best my favorite thing from this week. So Michelle, what was your favorite thing from this week? Well, I'm pleased to say that, again, this week had a lot of opportunities and experiences that I could have mentioned, that I could mention as my favorite thing. But I guess the highlight really was uh, experiencing the Run Disney event. That was, you know, so much fun. And just after the race, we got together with some dear friends of ours, um, Pat from Conversations podcast and his lovely wife and had a great brunch together. So yes. yes I, I'm going to put all of that into one. Yeah. We will be discussing a lot of this later on in the show. So I, uh, while though that probably is my favorite thing from this week, yes. I'm going to save that Ooh. for later in the show because uh, we have, that's basically what our main topic is going to be about is the race week. About Pat and, and Kelly. About Pat and Kelly. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> It's just, we're just It'll gonna, make a great we're show. Gonna, we're going to spend about 50 minutes <laughs> talking about Pat and Kelly. Again, it'll be a good show. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> be fun. It will be. Uh, no, we, it, we will be talking about that at length. So just note that that is probably my favorite thing from mm-hmm. this week. But I'm going to go and do a couple other things that are my favorite things from this week. And, uh, you know, I, I just, and I talk about it, it seems like 
week in and week out. We sure out. do. <laughs> but Loki is amazing. Yeah. And I wanted to say freaking there, but yeah. Eh, eh. I guess I did anyway. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. This show has been spectacular. Every week when it finishes, I'm just like, I want more of it. And I I'm know. Excited and a little bummed that it's going to end right. next week. I'm hoping that they find a way to continue it on because we talked about it after we watched this week's episode. Again, no spoilers, but like Loki season one, we love, we thought it was fantastic. It was great. Loki season two is blowing my mind away. Yeah. Every single episode, the acting, the storyline, the cliffhangers. It's amazing. Right. Yeah. It's very suspenseful. It's, uh, you know, just, I don't know, not white knuckle, but you're just like, what is going to happen? And as I said last week, it, it is not a predictable show. You you really can't say, okay, I knew that was going to happen. It, it's very intriguing in how they, they make it... Um, Unique and unpredictable. Yeah. Um, Tom Hiddleston, amazing yeah. as Loki. I mean, we knew that all along. He's been fantastic as Loki since the original, the first Thor movie. Right. He's been phenomenal in that role. Um, he's taken it even a step further in Loki, especially this season. Right. He is magnificent. His acting has been spectacular. Oh, for sure. Role. Still love that he is consistent with his Loki head lift move. <laughs> Hair flip. <laughs> yes. At some point I need to just like, I'm sure it's already out there in YouTube or on TikTok or whatever, but just a compilation of right. Loki hair flips right. because it's, it's, it's so fantastic. He does it all the time. I know. It's, it's like, how it, is he going to do it? This it makes week? me smile every time he does the For hair sure. flip. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah. And I, you know, another thing that I thought we saw on Disney plus this week that came out that we really enjoyed was the Beatles now right. and then yeah. the, about the creation of the brand new right. quote unquote right. Beatles song, which I thought was fascinating to see how they developed it and then to hear it and everything. It was, it was and it very, really interesting. It's not a very long piece, but right. it was an interesting piece. Yeah. I think it's like 16 or 18 minutes, something like that. It's a short documentary, but they packed in a lot of information. And so no spoilers here because it, it really did um, present some interesting uh, concepts, you know, one, who wrote it, um, but also how did they manage to get it to become some uh, uh, a song that they could produce and that they included all of the Beatles right. in this song. So it was really, really cool. Um, yeah. And in, in some regards, it was so touching that I think I told you afterwards, I, I, I feel joyous about this story. I feel sad of it not being possible to have more, right? More Beatles, I guess. Yeah, is what it I'm is. Saying. It's a little bit of both. Uh, yeah. It hits, it hits uh, across the board on the emotions, right? Um, for sure. And we're we're more Beatles fans, right. so you know, I mean, it strikes probably even more at home with us because yes. we are such Beatles fans. So, um, but it was it was interesting, yeah, and it is fascinating to see mm -hmm. what technology has done and how. Um, we can do some amazing things right. like that and yes. how they were able to do it. And it was legit. It wasn't, you know, AI stuff right. or whatever. I mean, yes, there is a little bit of that to it. Yes. No, no spoilers than that. Um, but it wasn't like they just pretended right. to have John's voice. Yeah, they didn't like, you know, I know people here, especially with scam alerts and everything, how AI can take your voice and create uh, any kind of scenario. It, that's it's not that it's not that they yeah. really did record <laughs> their voices it was it was interesting and yes. fascinating and as, as somebody who loves sound and loves working with mm -hmm. sound and seeing how people work with sound i was even more fascinated by right. it because right. of that so really cool i hope you get to watch it and enjoy it the way we did yeah. So now that we've looked back at last week, let's go ahead and move on to this week's show. I have lots of stuff for you this week. It was a fairly busy week, so I'm going to touch probably not on everything, but I'm going to touch on a few key points from this week, including we just finished another fabulous Run Disney event, and this week we learned what the future holds for the races where every mile is magic. We'll tell you about that so yeah. you can start planning out your chance to run at a Disney right. park. Or run you. again. Mm-hmm. 
We received some new details about Disney Cruise Line's next private destination. We'll tell you all about that. And Disney has decided to go even more all in on the future of streaming. Of course, we'll fill you in on that as well. But that's later. Let's go ahead and get to our very magical main topic of the week. I'm late. I'm late. For a very important date. No time to say hello. Goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. So for this week's main topic, as we've already alluded to much of through the first segment of this show, um, yes, we were lucky enough to be able to go out to Walt Disney World Resort and take part in our first ever Run Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon Race Weekend. Right. Yeah, we've done other 5Ks and, and 10Ks at Walt Disney World, but... And half marathons. And that's right, half marathons, but doing a wine and dine event was new for us yes we have so. when this the first time i know i think that we've done well we technically have done the springtime one although it was before it was springtime surprise we did it when it was the star wars races right. in the spring um so technically but if you look at all the dates of the calendars in walt disney world we've now run a race and all the date on the yeah, regularly cool. scheduled dates in the calendar um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we just did the, we just did the 5k. It just kind of worked out for our schedule better. Plus we kind of planned this out with some friends of ours, right. as we talked about a little bit already, um, that this might be something that would work for all of us. So we just decided that the 5k was perfect for us for this race. Yeah. And you know, 5k's are, are races that anybody really can do. I mean, if you're trying to get a certain time frame, then yes, you have to do more training, but it's, to me, it's one of those races that it's, you get to have a full experience and not feel stressed over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a nice, <laughs> nothing is easy about any run, right? Uh, but it's a, it's an easier morning. It's, it's not like, okay, I got to get planned out. We've done the half marathon. You know what planning out for a half marathon right. is not only is it the super training, uh, but it's also, you know, knowing that you're going to be out there for a good couple hours right. plus uh, on the court. We're not that fast. It's going to be a good couple <laughs> hours plus. Um, out there on the course. So, you know, they, whereas the 5K, you, you know, it's going to be knocked out in about an hour plus, you know, a little yeah. time in the corral For or the whatever. For the most part, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we do have some interesting stories because very much during this run, <laughs> Disney Wine and Dine Race week, Weekend, even though we've done many, many race <laughs> weekends, we almost came off as rookies I know. <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll tell you about that in a little bit. So you are going to want to hear about that because we have some funny stories to tell yes. about how we very much rookied this, yes. <laughs> this race in many aspects. And somehow I think Miss Minutes was not favorable to us either. <laughs> I think maybe because I've been talking about yes. how terrifying she is online. Right, you, know? you you brought some jinx to us. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Uh. Uh, anyway, so let's start off. We, we decided that we weren't going to take any extra. Well, we took one extra day off. I needed to take Friday off of work to obviously run the race on Friday. But um, we weren't going to get out there. I could get off work a little bit early and still get out to the expo mm -hmm. in time um, and make sure we make it. So we, I got off work at 4.30. I left a half hour early. Um, and we got out there to the expo about 6 o'clock. Right. Um, and it went fairly smoothly I, you right. know i mean by that point you know is getting ready to close down for the day most people had already gotten their bibs and their right. merchandise and everything so we zipped in there you know got our bibs got our shirts took a couple pictures mm -hmm. um went to the merchandise tent unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> you know, the merch, there was great merch there right the stuff we wanted, gone, right. done. We were too late for that, yes, right? Yes, yes. You know, and as, you know, when we asked about one thing, she says, no, um, I think it was for the pass holder. The pass holder pin. pin. Yeah. She says, yeah, no, that sold out and yeah, it's man. not coming back not any coming more back. days. Don't even think about coming <laughs> yeah, in tomorrow. Even, right. It ain't going to be here for you. <laughs> so that was maybe our first aspect of being a very much a rookie race weekend. I mean, right. we were there plenty of time to get our bibs. It wasn't a, you know, a hassle. It wasn't, a, you know, Fretting, we've right. done that in the past. Mm -hmm. We've fretted to, yes. like, are we going to get our bibs before they, the expo the closes, closes down? Uh, that was not that. But we did not get the merch we wanted. Right. So, you know, first lesson, re reminded 
Yes. Maybe we need to go ahead and take that extra time, um, even if it's just a half day of work or whatever, to get right. to the expo a little earlier and possibly get those things that we want. Right, right. I mean, we haven't had too much problems in the past of getting, if not all, at least some of the key merchandise things we were looking forward to. But it's interesting that I guess things are a lot more sought out. And yeah. So that is something new that we need to adjust and pivot to yeah. do. So we missed out on that, but that's okay. Things yeah. happen. We decided after that, we, we knew it was going to be, uh, try and be an early night. Um, cause you know, if you know, run Disney, it's <laughs> an extremely early yes. morning the next day. Um, so we just went over to our resort and this was the first time ever we stayed at Disney's old key West resort mm -hmm. as DVC members. Right. This was the original DVC resort. Exactly. We yeah. thought, you know, hey, it's kind of close to Epcot. Right. Let's check it out. It's just one night. So if we're not huge fans of it, we, right. it's just one night. It's fine. Um, so we got there, checked in. What were your initial impressions of Old Key West, Michelle? Okay. Um, so I have a list of a couple things, first of all, that I really liked about Old Key West. Uh, we did reserve a preferred studio, which meant we were closer to the main lobby building, mm -hmm. the hospitality. We were, we were about as close as you could be That was anyone. Yeah, yeah, it was incredibly convenient. And, you know, I was thinking that if, you know, whether it's us or if anybody is traveling and, and is staying there, having that. And a lot of times they don't charge more points for that. Um, it, if you're booking it early enough, it, it sometimes does the preferred room sometimes could be a See, couple more points. Couple it's usually more points not like per we're night. not jumping ten points. Generally right, speaking. right. But it's a two, two to five points more to, yeah, to do right. like near the hospitality house. Yeah. Right. But I think when we booked this, we didn't we didn't have to um, pay more than a standard view room. Um, but anyway, so that was super convenient. I mean, we literally could walk out our door and see the main mm -hmm. building, and so it made. If again, if you were staying there and you wanted to get to the other parks. You didn't have to take any internal loop buses. You were right there by the pool, by the hospitality um, or community house and the the dining and store and things like that. So super convenient on that regards. Um, the We had a little balcony and I thought that the views from that balcony were nice. They were, it was very um, zen-like, you know, a lot of trees and everything. Our particular patio really didn't have a great view of the golf course. We did have a little bit, bit of a view. Yeah, you though. could. Yeah. If we you couldn't see the it, hole. Right. We could see the tee box. Um, yeah, th there's a golf course. If you mm -hmm. don't know, there's a golf course that runs right next to there and, and Saratoga Springs. Right, there's right. a golf course right there. Um, we got to see the tee box, the little, little lake that you had to clear out of right. the tee box and some of the fairway we could see, um, but we could not see all the way down to the hole. Right. So it, it was a, it was a nice little view. Um, the other thing that I meant to mention in terms of, especially with our close proximity to the hospitality house is that they do have a, um, a boat shuttle that goes to Disney Springs from there. Mm -hmm. And again, we were very close to it, but just the fact that that resort has that is it, pretty cool um, and convenient for that. Uh, I thought the shower pressure was the best <laughs> shower in a, any DVC place. Especially after here. the run. Yes. It was wonderful. It was nice and warm because it was a little chilly morning, nice and warm, a lot of water pressure. Right. Um, large head, right? So it was like it was a, it, you know, it was good coverage of spray. Right, right. <laughs> We're talking up the shower. I know. It's funny. But it was pretty um, cool. But it was yeah. a, it was a really nice shower. Yes, it hit right. It, it hit the right spot at the right time. Right, right. Um, I also liked that the beds were lifted so you could store your uh, luggage underneath and not have to either have them sitting in the room or taking up closet space. So, so those were some of the thoughts that I had and my impressions of it. Um, and so my first overall, it was a little difficult for to say a first overall impression also when we got there because it was nighttime. So we really couldn't appreciate, you know, what is the landscaping like? You know, what is what did the buildings look like? Uh, I mean, you could kind of get an idea, but in the daylight, it's, it's so much brighter mm -hmm. and, and, you know, cute and sweet and things like that. Right. Um, I liked um, both at night and 
even more so during the day, I thought the it's it's a very pretty resort. Now it's we were talking about being near the hospitality house. It very much reminded me of a, a most moderate resorts. How right. you know how they are kind of widespread. You know, think yes. of Port Way Orleans. Um, think of Caribbean Beach, where there's a lot of buildings right. um, that you may have to take extra transportation to get to right. the final transportation of getting to parks or wherever you may be headed. Exactly. Um, it's very much like that. I was where it was also nicer to be near the hospitality house that we didn't have to worry about right. that in that aspect. Um, but I thought it was laid out. It was. It was. I thought it was a very pretty resort. Um, liked the way it looked. Right. I liked all the activities that they had going in and around the right. hospitality house. Yes. There were a couple of places to dine there, whether it be Olivia's Cafe, which we'll talk about a little bit more here coming up. Um, but also there were a couple of takeout places. Um, the pool, we didn't visit the pool except for to go near it. Right. Um, but it looked nice. They had the movies under the stars going out right, right. by the pool. Um, tennis courts, shuffleboard, all the stuff you would right. expect um, from a resort. Um, yeah, I did think it was laid out very well, and it was would have been very accommodating for a family to right. be there for sure. And another thing that was really nice about it was the parking. You could park right next to your mm-hmm. building um, versus at some of the, you know even the moderate resorts where you have to maybe park a ways away from where you're sometimes actually, yeah. yeah. So Sometimes this was really can be each building had their own little parking lot. Yeah. So that was, it was, it was okay. Now here's where old Key West maybe <laughs> isn't our favorite resort. Right. Okay. We'll just go with that. Um, it looks, and, and from what we understand it, it was refurbished not that long ago. It still seems inside a little bit worn mm-hmm. to me. Um, like some of the fixtures and some of the furniture, Bed was fine. Bed was right. comfortable. Mm-hmm. It just seemed a little bit worn. You know, nothing terrible. It was clean. It was really, we talked clean. about the shower mm-hmm. already. There just seemed to be like there. It almost needs another refresher. I think. Right. Yeah. Just some little touches here and there that you know that that we saw. Um, I mean, the appliances all seemed fine. Everything worked okay. Uh, I I liked that the little mini refrigerator actually had a quasi freezer Mm -hmm. section so i thought that was kind of nice that you don't usually get in the those resorts um but yeah the like with what you're saying the dresser the some of the doors were kind of the drawers were kind of stuck together you know right if you open the second drawer it would carry either the first drawer or the third drawer right right (laughs) yeah um you know so that that seemed kind of if, if it was refurbished you know, over the last couple of years, that seemed like they got a lot of wear and tear, I guess. I don't know. Nothing wrong with the room. Um, Like I said, it was clean. It's what you expect from Mm -hmm. Disney. Just like, just, we're just trying to let you know if you're thinking about going there, what you might expect. And I think it's a, it's a fine resort if you're like, I don't, here's another thing about it. It doesn't have like a big comfy chair or a couch or anything, which, you know, for many DVC, even the studios we're used to having some other place to sit has a table and two chairs. There's actually a fair amount of room right. within the studios. It's fairly large. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's laid out in an interesting format, but it just, it doesn't have that, you know, extra place to kind of relax and sit. If you want to spend more time in your room and not have to either sit in, you know, basically a dining right. room table and chairs or your bed. You know, right. It doesn't have that, which is kind of what we get used to when, with DVC rooms. Right. Even the studios. Yeah. You know. Right. I, it, it seems like, even though they have two queen size beds and it can sleep up to four, it doesn't seem like the rest of the accommodations would really support four people. Mm-hmm. Like even if you were a family of, you know, both parents and um, two kids, some of the amenities that you get at other DVC resorts just aren't there. So like, for example, Tom's mentioning about the table and chair. So Really, you could only have two people sitting at the ta- at the table to, if you had food. You know, let's say you're trying to get breakfast going or whatever. I mean, I guess they do have a table also out in a little patio that two people could sit out there. But otherwise, it's going to be some people s- sitting on a bed because there isn't the couch o- option either. Um, and the other thing is not having a split bathroom. I thought it's, it's fine for, you know, two people. But when you start to get three or four that can really slow things down in the morning for getting ready 
to do something. And not that that's a problem. It's just something that people would have to plan for. Because right. it's like, even just to brush your teeth or do your hair or makeup or something like that, it's all in the one restroom area. Right. I mean, there are two sinks in there because there's one within the restroom and there's one that's kind of a bar yeah. type sink that's in the little kitchenette right, there. Right. I don't know if you want to brush your teeth in right. the bar type sink or if anybody would really appreciate it if right. you did that in your family. Maybe you're fine with it. It's right. okay. And there is the, you know, like a length, um, full, length mirror. full length mirror that you could use to do your hair out right. there as well. So you could, while someone's in the bathroom, yes. do that stuff. But it's not as convenient as like the split bathrooms. Right, where that you, most of most right, locations many of them have, have now. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, like I said. If and you, the storage too. So for for clothing, again, two, maybe three people, depending on how long you're staying. If you're staying right. for, for several nights, uh, two or three people. Four people, I think if you were staying there for three nights, four people, you'd have... You'd, Probably not get all your clothes in the dresser. You're, you it depends if you're the little if it's little ones. Yeah, you probably can. You yeah, know if they're bigger ones, right. maybe not so yeah. much. Um, I, I the thing I think about it more than anything else is like if you are people who are going to spend a lot of park time, and not spend as much room time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's fine. Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. You know, you're probably going to pay a little bit less than some l- comparable right. resort right. points wise or dollar wise because right. you can stay there. It doesn't have to be DV, even though it's a DVC resort, right. just like all of them, you can pay for them right. in cash. Um, so it, it'd be fine. But if you're, if you are someone like us that enjoys a little room time in right. between your park visits, right. Uh, you may want to look in another direction. Right. It right. may not be the spot for you. Right. Exactly. Um, but it's good. It, uh, we're not trying to say it's bad. Right. It's not. Yes. It's a good Disney resort. Um, it just could use a little touches that we would appreciate more for us. Right. Personally. Right. Yes. Um, so, you know, that's what we kind of thought about it. Um, we did get a couple meals at the, the main mm-hmm. restaurant there. Right. One we did that you can do as you can do in many of these resorts now from the main restaurant there that is a table service mm-hmm. restaurant. You can order to go. We ordered for the first night to go right. because we were trying to do an early night. Um, so we got a couple meals from there. And then we did meet up after the race. We'll talk about the race in a little bit with Pat and Kelly. Mm-hmm. Pat from the Conversations podcast. You've right. heard on this show many times. His lovely wife, Kelly. Um, we had a little brunch there. Yes. Um, so Michelle, what did you think about the food and basically Olivia's cafe in right. general, both to go and well, sit down for brunch? Right. I thought it was a great restaurant. It's very bright. Mm-hmm. Um, so it kind of goes with the theming of the resort, uh, you know, very uh, pastel colors and, and, and bright. The servers and the servers were all amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, people would check on you throughout the, the thing, the time that you're there. Um, so I, I thought that was, it was great in that regards. I thought the food was really good. I, I think we all tried something different. We all in, seem to enjoy our, our food there and it was a brunch. So I think that was kind of a nice thing that they Especially offered. after race day, right. which is kind of nice because that you may be Maybe getting there a little later. Maybe right. you're a little hungrier for something for lunch rather than breakfast. Right. And it, and it wasn't um, a weekend. So it wasn't like, okay, they only serve brunch on the weekends. This was a weekday that, that we yeah, had it. Friday. Right. I mean, you could get, you could buy entrees that are typical breakfast entrees. Yeah. It's not like that wasn't available to you, but it was kind of nice that it was a little bit elevated and that there, it was a brunch offering. So mm. I, I thought those were really good things about it. Yeah, it was good. Um, so for for the to-go order, uh, Michelle got the fried chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the, uh, what was it? The Indian coconut curry right. with fried tofu. Um, I thought, uh, first taste of the, fr- the, the my dish, the curry dish, um, I thought it was a little bit salty. But the more I got into it, the more I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I thought it actually balanced out pretty well. Um, I, I would have liked the fried tofu to be a little crisper right? because um, I like really crispy fried tofu, but it was good overall. I wasn't disappointed in that dish. Right. Yeah. I think and if you had had that at the table service, it might have been. It might have been. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's always when you have it to go and you know, it, it's, you got to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, <laughs> right. you, know, you know, um, cause it's, you know, obviously it's, it's packaged differently. It's, it takes some time even when they get it packaged right. up get it to you, get it to your room, right. open it up, eat it, whatever. 
Um, but I enjoyed it okay. For your fried chicken, what did you think? Yeah, I thought it was good. It wasn't the best fried chicken I've ever had, but it was it was good. Um, it was uh, a nice portion of chicken. Uh, it was like a breast, mm-hmm. and it, it was fried up nice. It was still moist. Um, it came with some mashed potatoes and green beans, and I thought those were all cooked nicely and, and accompanied it really well. It was you know kind of like that down-home kind of food, and I thought it was really good. Yeah, I, I looked at it and I thought your, your dish looks very good. Right, something right. I would eat, it, certainly. Um, I just felt more like something kind of to get me geared up for race day. Right. Uh, so a rice and veggie and saucy dish kind of spoke to me. That yeah, I, it was funny because I was kind of thinking that when we were looking at the menu. And, I, and for some reason, I guess my body just craved for the chicken, which is so unusual for me to be craving chicken ever. But yeah, yeah. but it was it nice to be good. able to get some sort of entrees and take it back to our room that weren't just, I mean, nothing wrong with getting a burger or whatever, but just something a little different, something a little bit more, I don't know. I wouldn't call it fine dining, but you know, a a little bit more upscale. Um, So we enjoyed that. Um, Then for the brunch, um, you got the shrimp and grits, which looked very good. I had a taste of it. I thought it was tasted Mm -hmm. very nice. Um, I got the crab cake Benedict, which was, Extremely interesting because it's a, it was a crab cake, um, actually served on a biscuit rather than right. an English muffin. Um, with a it had a key lime hollandaise sauce. I don't know if I could tell the difference. <laughs> it was key lime versus, <laughs> right. you know, a lemon hollandaise sauce right. or whatever. Maybe a slight tang difference, but um, I thought it was very good. And it's served with what they call Olivia's potatoes, mm-hmm. which are kind of a, oh, I don't know, it's kind of a creamy potato mm. um, thing. That was right. it was very interesting and. Tasty yes. and enjoyable. I think um, Pat and Kelly also had that, and they said right. they really liked the potatoes as well. Right. So it was good. Yeah. Um, you liked your shrimp and grits? I did. I thought the you know the the shrimp was cooked really nicely. You know, sometimes when you order shrimp and grits, the the shrimp is a little overcooked or whatever. That wasn't the case with this. This was. I thought they were perfect. Uh, the grits had a really nice texture to them as well, and nice flavor to it. Uh, the sauce was was also very delicious. Um, it was kind of a little of a rich dish. So it was, uh, you know, for me to eat all of it was, was going to be kind of a lot, I think. But um, maybe it was just because I had been up so early in the morning and doing the run that it was just like, okay, I don't need all of this right now. Right. And, and so it, it just kind of um, was a perfect serving amount that I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, They do offer um, cocktails. Right. As a matter of fact, their whole menu has pairings with all their different dishes, which I found fascinating. We decided not to go and get cocktails. We just went simple coffee and water to rehydrate and wake up a little bit (laughs) with some coffee (laughs) because it's been a, we'll get into a moment, a very short night. Um, But it it was overall, I I thought it was a good meal, not a fantastic meal right. not like where we were blown away by it right. but it was a good meal for and both of them it was suitable for what we were looking to get done um within our own resort there. right exactly yes i think the fact that um also that we were so close i don't know how convenient the takeout is if you have to take a bus for a long way true um maybe if you had a burger or something yeah. like that but for some of these other dishes that uh, it might not um, sit as long in the containers. Yeah, this is a good resort in general. If it, like many of the moderate resorts, if you have either rented a car or driven yourself, in the fact that it, you cut that extra leg of right. transportation, having to wait on an extra bus or whatever it might be right. to get there. Um, so, and, then, and that's the same case with this, where you can go ahead and um, get from your resort room to the hospitality house, right. pick up your to go and then right. zip it back, not have to wait for a bus, yes. you know, to take it there. And then the food might cool down. Right. I mean, you do right. have a microwave in your room. If you right. do want to warm it up, you can do that. But you know, like it's, it was a good point. Michelle brought up that take that into account. If you decide to order something right. to go from the, the hospitality yeah, exactly. house. So yeah, overall it was fine. Yeah. It wasn't phenomenal. We're not going to say that you need to go to Olivia's cafe. If right. you visit Walt Disney world, we would never say that. But if you happen to be staying there, it's not a bad choice or to get sure. a couple right. of meals while you're there. Right. And the fact that it is a DVC resort, they do uh, have discounts for mm-hmm. DVC members as well as annual right. pass holders. Yep. So Which we nice. took advantage of. Right. Of course. 
Very much so. So now we'll get to the race weekend. <laughs> How we very much rookied it um, many times. Starts off with something that really wasn't completely our fault. And maybe something that also is a little bit of a strike against old Key West right. Resort. Is that uh, the walls aren't the thickest walls in the world. <laughs> We were there trying to get to sleep early, knowing we were going to have to get up extremely early. If you've done Run Disney, you know you need to get up extremely ridiculously early to get out there to these events. Well, somebody in a, you know, hey, more power to them. They were out late at the parks, Disney Springs, whatever it is. They came rolling up to their room somewhere between 1230 and 1 a.m. in the morning. And they were a little noisy. (laughs) Yeah, it it sounded... Like it was maybe two families or two at least couple couples, um, because at, at some point it seemed like the door closed and and it was still there was talking but less people and things like that. So I think some people were staying maybe in an adjacent room or nearby room and they all got together in this one. Um, it was the one bedroom that was we were adjacent to, and so the in that one bedroom the living area is what is adjacent was adjacent to our studio and so yes it was i mean it wasn't like uh, people are fighting or anything like that it was just they were you know having a good time and talking and everything but for us it was very much something that kept us awake for a yes. while <laughs> so nothing a big deal with that that's happened to us in the past right. you know that's nothing we could control we just you know we didn't get maybe not that we would have gotten a lot of sleep but maybe we got a little less sleep yes. than we normally would have for right. a run disney race morning um but we got up at the time that we had determined that this was the time we need to get up for our race and we started to get dressed and get ready and we had decided, hey, look, you know what? Let's not drive in, even though we had our car there. Right. Let's go ahead and take Disney transportation. It'll be easier when we get done. You know, it'll get us there. We don't have to worry about driving. We don't have to get all sweaty in the car. Right. You know? And it wasn't like a long walk to we get were, the bus. It yeah, was, we were again, right we're there. right there at the hospitality house. So we walked out of our room getting ready to take our bus. And right as we were walking out, there goes a bus <laughs> that we, we were like one minute from catching. Yeah, we were like, yeah. oh, all right, well, there's another one there. We'll catch that one. We were the first on that bus and we sat there and we sat there and we sat there You're right. and we sat there. Fine. We finally left about 15 minutes yeah, later. A few other people joined yes. the bus, but not many. And then we went. One thing about this bus is we also had to go over to Saratoga Springs yes. to pick up some people. We got there. There was a bunch of people there already ready to go, get yeah. on the bus. Great. I got on there. Then we heard from outside, oh, we need to hold this bus up. We have somebody coming from elsewhere within the resort that it needs to get to this bus. So we sat there. Right. And we sat there. And we sat there. <laughs> and finally they showed up. I know. And, and, you know, one of the things that's usually fun about taking the buses to the run Disney events is everybody on the bus is usually pumped up and excited about the run. And I I think waiting, you started to hear comments from people who were not happy about waiting. Especially because we were pushing up against it. We did not, we didn't walk out the door at 3.30 in the morning to catch the bus. We were closer to four. Right. You know, a little after four, actually, when we went uh, the bus. The race starts at five. So right. 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Yeah, plus significant. Plus time to get to there. Right. Suddenly, we're right up against it. Yes. And that's what happened. Right. We arrived on our bus. We're walking through security. Group A from the corrals is starting their race. Right. We have a long ways to wind around. If you know anything about going to a Run Disney event... It takes you through a, a winding maze right. of tents and other places before you actually finally get to your corrals. Right. It took us a while. So A is going off. Group B is going off. Group C is going up t- to go ahead and get there. By the time we reach our corral. Yeah. I mean, when we were getting close, we heard them say, okay, it doesn't matter if you were A or B, you're going into corral C now. Right. So we get there. Unfortunately, Michelle had a little 
something. And we, we also needed a hydrate, but Michelle had a little something in your throat. Yeah, maybe a little tickle, yeah. Yeah. So we're like, okay, let's get some water really quickly before we go in there. We also need, we had been on the bus for a while. We need to use the restroom, restroom facilities right. before we get on the race course. Right. Because it's a ways until you get to the next restroom exactly. facilities on the race course, plus the time in the corral. So we were about to head into C. We took a detour, got the water, came back. Oh, Group C corral is closed. <laughs> I know. And it, it, these places were so close together. I mean, it was really literally seconds difference. Like if we hadn't gone, the water wasn't far. It was what about? Oh, it was right there. Right there. And we, right we, just, we each got a cup of water and we started walking back. I mean, it was just so funny how In close. that amount of time, they had closed the corral. Right. So we got into group. D, D, which I didn't even know Group D existed for this race, but right. we got in there. Um, we were one of the last people. I mean, not the last people. There right. were people that came oh, after yeah. us, um, but we were one of the last people that get in that corral. So, so wow, well, here we are right. back in the pack. <laughs> we are the balloon ladies. I know, right? <laughs> um, luckily, we have a little experience with Disney corrals, oh. while Disney World corrals right. in particular we kind of know the routes to kind of maneuver our way a little bit farther up. I'm not going to say we moved all the way up to group B or no, even group C, no. but we did get a lot closer than, right. you know, there. So we did have put some distance between us and the balloon. Ladies. Right. And not to make it sound like we were cutting in front of a lot of people or anything like that. It's no. just that when you first enter the corral, it's very wide, but as they start moving you, it narrows and it has as tom says turns so i think a lot of people even people behind coming up after us were going further to the right because everybody at first fills up you know people fill at the corral left to right so a lot of people were thinking oh i'm at the beginning of the pack at the right but as the turns happen they ended up being in the right. back you so. gotta you, you see people moving quickly that's usually not the play. You got to find that balance in between where people are moving quickly right. and that area where it kind of pivots, um, <laughs> where you can find that space to kind of move around. Right. So we know the, how the corral shapes. Right. So we kind of found a good portion of that middle ground between the two spots right. Right. where you don't get backed up and where you're not m moving so quickly and then you get stuck later. Yes. Um, so we were able to move up to a decent spot, got out on the race course, and let me tell you, it was wonderful. Yeah. That race was amazing. The weather couldn't Perfect. have been more. I think that's the, we've done a few Walt Disney World races. Mm -hmm. Probably about the best weather we've had yes. for a race morning. Oh, morning. yeah. Couldn't have asked for anything better. It was it was dry. And it was cool. Um, it was so clear. And yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. Um, great time. Um, saw all the characters. We did not take any character pictures. We did take some pictures out there, made sure we were, got posed right. for boy, when we were running by the various different, uh, photographers. Right. Um, but I mean, it was, it was great. It was beautiful. Epcot was lit up spectacularly. Yes. Um, just enjoyed the whole thing. The music was fun. The crowd energy, as it is for every run Disney event, right. was spectacular. Mm -hmm. Everybody was having a good time. Everybody was just happy to be there. And we were the same way. We just loved, loved, loved it. Yeah, I think it was my favorite run at Disney Walt Disney World in their run Disney event. I, I mean, even though we had the little, you know, mishap and rush at the beginning part of it uh and we've had some other issues some last race we had where the driver got lost and had yeah, to go back to we've the, had some bus issues <laughs> yes we really should have about the buses. <laughs> i know um but all in all and, and we didn't get very much sleep at all but all in all i think uh it was super enjoyable the theme of alice in wonderland was so fun and everybody you know for the most part, does do something that connects with the race or at least with characters, Disney yeah. characters. And it's things, it kind so. of across the board. You get people that just get in their running gear right. and you're good. Yes. Uh, you know, that's, that's what you do. That's great. They wear their, some of them wear their race shirts that you yes. get there, which were, I really was happy with our race shirts. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Yeah. Uh, long sleeve, really nice. And very uh, soft. Liked them a lot. Um, um, but 
you know, and some people fully deck out and, you know, in full on costumes right. and some people just kind of bound a little bit. I think mm-hmm. we were mostly, well, I, I think you were more in close to costume. I was yeah. a little closer to bounding right, in right. my costume, yeah. but we, we, you'll probably, if you've seen the pictures, um, so Michelle did a, a magnificent Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> she did some real work, actually um, did a little sewing. Yeah, I um, made the apron yeah. from scratch and she without a fan- pattern or she anything. She looked phenomenal. Um, I did more of a simple um, <laughs> white rabbit. Uh, Michelle made my little uh, clock, clock face right. that you, if you see the pictures, you'll see me wearing and pointing to it quite often. Um, and then I, we just bought, you know, I bought some ears and we bought some um, gear that kind of matches what the white rabbit, right, the color wore. scheme. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, we had a lot of good, good time getting out there on the course, taking pictures, it, just exploring. You know, the the beauty of Epcot as right. we were running past it, and it was just a really, really good time. Yeah, it was fun to just take it all in. Especially, I liked that the beginning part of the race is when you were more backstage, and more of the the meat of the race you're actually running through world showcase yeah and you know it's lit up at like they do at night and so it was like you said and you feel the energy the music the cast members from um different countries were there right. with their flags huh. yeah it was Touching. great all the way around the yeah. characters were we didn't get any pictures of the characters the lines were actually pretty long for the characters it's oh, like, yes. whoa why is that I one know. that one is really long um we did not get into any of those um but we did appreciate them see the characters mm-hmm. um there were bands that were out there playing yes. there was a gospel choir right um out there the jaminators were out there yeah. um it was it was cheerleaders yes it was schools. really yeah. really fun yeah, I like how the local community is involved yeah. in it. Um, really enjoyed it so very much. And um, I know everybody, I saw some great pictures from everybody who took part in the 10K mm-hmm. and the half marathon. Congratulations to all of you. If you whether it didn't matter what race you entered or what right. multiple races, congratulations to you all. I hope you had a blast because um, you looked like you were having a blast and they, every race looked fantastic. Right. The, uh, the medals were really sweet. Oh, man. Those medals yeah. were some of the best medals right. I think we've gotten the, the, for the 5K. Right. Um, reversible it. menu uh, medals. Um, I saw some of the, the 10K in the half. They looked cool too, but I was really happy with what our yes. 5K medal looked like. Right, right. Exactly. So. Um, what was it? Mad Hatter on one side with the Cheshire Cat and right. Alice on the other side right. with the Cheshire Cat. Really good. Yeah. Uh, really good. So, yeah, I mean, overall, um, we had a fantastic race day. Um, we were going to go to the parks that day. We started to go and then we realized we were lacking sleep significantly. Time, we yeah. maybe got two hours total. Yeah, the that's night before. the best. I think yeah. combining our time was two yeah. hours. Yeah. So we went for a little bit and then we're, it, it, we hit a wall pretty quickly. Yeah. And because we couldn't, we, we only did one night at our resort. We couldn't really go back and, you know, kind of, um, recharge right so we like okay we still have to get a drive home at some point today let's go ahead and head home so we didn't really do a lot of park time yeah um but we had a great time with our friends with pat and and kelly right a great time with all the other run disney racers it was so much fun can't wait for the next run disney race yeah yeah despite all these issues that we tell you about yes yes and uh no it was like you said there were there were some funny glitches but it uh didn't dampen any of it it was just total fun and love love loved it love love loved it and love 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 all you racers all your supporters right whether you ran at all but you're just out there on the sidelines supporting us cast members and uh guests disney fans family members yep Thank you so very much. Your energy helps support all of us throughout these races, especially some of these longer races where you need those boosts to get through it. Thank you so much for everything you do out there on the race course. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit, but there's nothing. No race has the energy of a run Disney race. Yeah, right. You you just will not. I'll talk about it later. Uh, I'm not going to get into it now, but it's amazing. Um, So good. Um, so, i uh, love to hear about your experience with the race. Hopefully you got out there wine and dine half right. weekend, whether whatever race you had, we'd love to hear about it. We saw a lot of you great pictures, fantastic stuff out there. 
And if you ever have any questions about wanting to do your first run Disney race, right. we would be happy to, even though we're very much acted like rookies, <laughs> this trip, um, you know, kind of give you some tips, pointers, avoid what we did, right? Uh, you know, to help you along the way for yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. So that's a little peek at our run Disney wine and dine half marathon race weekend fun i'm late i'm late for a very important date no time to say hello goodbye i'm late i'm late i'm late we had such a great time at that race Mm -hmm. you probably heard it in our voices um i just can't wait for the next race for sure right right Um, yep agreed Another guy who actually was out there this weekend. Unfortunately, we didn't. We we, we were going to try and run into him, but I, I told you we went out of gas pretty quickly. <laughs> we couldn't match up with him. Um, but our great friend Nate from Main Street and More Travel was also out there. Right. He ran the challenge this I know. week. That's incredible. Uh, after running a marathon, I think in Ohio, like two weeks ago. Right, so, that's oh, impressive. Wow, that's amazing, Nate. Um, congratulations to yes. him. Um, he had some great pictures as well. But we need to talk about him because. Not only is he a great runner, he is a fantastic Disney vacation planner. We're talking, of yeah. course, about Nate with Main Street and more travel. Because let's face it, we all have trips we're thinking about taking in the very near future. Well, if you do, whether it be to Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise, or anywhere in the world beyond, let me tell you, Nate is the certified Disney vacation planner that you are going to want to get in contact with. Oh my gosh, for sure. You know, as we, you know, mention all the time, he really has firsthand knowledge of things so he can really help you plan, customize a a trip that is going to be the best for you, answer your questions. It's really concierge level planning that doesn't cost you anything. High end. It is high end stuff that he will help you out with answer all your questions. He is there for you to make sure your trip, wherever it may be, be the best it possibly can be. And as Michelle mentioned, no extra cost to you. That's because either Disney or whatever other travel branch that he works through pays him for you. Your, what you end up paying is exactly what you pay. If you did all that work yourself, only you can save that time and just relax and enjoy and let him set it all up for you. Right. And you know what? He may even be able to save you some money from you doing it alone because he is on top of all the deals and steals that are out there. Yeah. I and mean, there's never a guarantee, but let me tell you, if there's a discount out there, Nate will find it for you. So what you got to do is go to distripsandmore.com, fill out the form there and just contact him, talk to him, tell him what you want to do and let him get to work for you. Right. So as Tom mentioned, once you fill out that form, Nate will be back in touch with you to start that planning, but be sure to tell him that Tom and Michelle sent you. Yeah. Again, that's Nate with Main Street and more travel. All right, let's go ahead and get to our Disney stories of the week. I have a few for you this week. And we're going to go back to our Run Disney stuff. That's because we just finished a Run Disney event. But this week, we also learned what the future holds for the races of where every mile is magic. Yeah, exciting. And it's good because now we can start planning for whatever it will be next. Well, our next Run Disney race will be. And right. hopefully what your first or next Run Disney right. race will be. Uh, this came off of the Run Disney website. We learned the upcoming race schedule for the rest of 2024 and on into 2025. Yeah. And there's some intriguing ones, some new races that yes. are coming and some new virtual races that I mean, I'm, I, I think we're going to do at least one of these virtual races for sure. So here's what the schedule lays out. And I'm going to put it out there as when the races are happening and when the general registration takes place. I take it that anybody who's in Club Run Disney mm-hmm. already knows when right. their date is. They don't, we don't need to tell you. Right. You're a big enough fan that we don't need to tell you when your registration date is. But for general registration, you'll probably want to know for some sure. of these races. So... It starts off with the Run Disney Virtual Series, which they have happen every summer. We don't know what the theme will be this year yet, but they're always a lot of fun. They always have some sort of themed medals. Right. You can do one race. You can do all three races. It's always a blast. Right. Um, It's going to take place from June 1st through August 31st of 2024. So you'll want to possibly take a look at that because you can do that whenever you want at your home at your own pace. Right. And... Well, first of all, sometimes 
they do, if you do all three races, they'll have a special medal right. as well. I don't know that they do that all the time, but they do that sometimes. The other thing that they provide to you in, in the cost of this is, one, you get the same medal, same quality type of medal as if you were doing a, an actual run Disney race at the properties. You also get to print out your own bibs. And you get to print out mile markers, really cute mile markers. Like if you want to set it up for yourself or you're, you're, you're doing it with a family, with family members or friends, and you can set up uh, your own mile markers, you know, to have just a little bit more to this virtual race than, than if you were to just go running around your neighborhood or whatever. So, so you do, you can do some fun things along with that virtual race that isn't just you run it and you get a medal. Yeah. A few years back, we did it with a couple of other Disney podcasts where right. we got involved and we all decided we were going to do this uh, virtual run Disney right. thing. And whether some people did one race, some people did all three. Right. We had a good time just kind of connecting with them and doing this, not together, but right. together in spirit uh, across the country. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and exactly. I highly recommend you doing something like that or together within your own community. Sure. Uh, it's a good way to do run Disney at home. Uh, also, so this was the new race that was interesting that came up this coming mm-hmm. year. Uh, they're going to be doing the first ever Disneyland Halloween yeah. half marathon race weekend. This will be taking place September 5th through the 8th of 2024. I think that's fascinating. Super cool. Yes. Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I wish we had known about this earlier. <laughs> I know. Um, we are, our next uh, run Disney race will be Disneyland, but it's right. going to be for the Disneyland um, race weekend coming up here in January, January. of 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, may keep us from doing this race as well, but that looks like that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I know. I, it is too bad we can't do it this time. But yeah, but maybe oh in well. the future. Yeah. You may look at it in the future. A general registration for that takes place on February 13th, 2024. So it's coming up. Right. Yeah, a it's a few months. months away, but just be prepared for that. Uh, if you you liked what we heard about the Wine and Dine Half Marathon Race Weekend, well, that's happening in 2024 from October 31st, so a little bit of Halloween flair mm-hmm. there as well, through November 3rd. General registration for that will begin on March 12th of 2024. Right. And if you can't make it to that race, those races, you can usually do the virtual. Yes. I mean, not as cool as right. doing it at a Disney park. Right. But it's still, you get the same medal. Right. Still a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to do that at home. Now, here's one that I think we are definitely going to do because I love it. I think it's interesting and fascinating and I can't wait to try the Run Disney Virtual 12 Ks of Christmas. Yeah, which they started already for this year. Oh, that's not new. I thought that was new for the next year. No, it's it's this year. So it's three 4K runs. Okay, so that's the 12K. Ah, see, I didn't know that they were doing that this year. So I thought yes. that was all new. No, so it's new cool. this year. Well, good. We have to sign up for that if it's still available. Yeah, I'll have to take a look. Yes, yeah. because that sounds like a lot of fun. Anyway, for 2024, that'll be happening December 1st through the 31st. And registration for that will be July 9th of 2024. Yeah. What's cool with that one, too, is at least for this new one that's about to happen, is your medals can also be ornaments. Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. I know. I think we have to do that for sure. Yeah. For sure. We need a few new ornaments on the tree. (laughs) Right. We don't have enough Disney ornaments. (laughs) No. Uh, Moving on to 2025, the Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend will be through January 8th through the 12th of 2025. I wonder. Maybe we do a race on my birthday. (laughs) The 10K will be on the 11th. Ooh, maybe. Anybody want to join for a birthday race celebration? Yeah, there you go. Uh, January 8th through the 12th. Uh, general registration for that is April 9th of 2024. The Disneyland Half Marathon weekend for 2025 will be January 30th through February 2nd. So a little bit later in, in January right. and into February than this year. Uh, general registration for that is April 18th of 2024. The Disney Princess Half Marathon Weekend will be February 20th through the 24th of 2025. And general registration for that is July 30th of 2024. Mm -hmm. And finally, the Run Disney Springtime Surprise Race Weekend will be April 3rd through April 6th of 2025. And general registration for that opens up on August 27th of 2024. Cool. 
Yeah. Cool, so, cool. Yes. Yeah, uh, lots things. of great races. Yeah. We need to pick out which race we're going to do. I was thinking about, because I, I do have plans to do the coast to coast and also do a challenge finally mm-hmm. uh, coming up sometime. Uh, at first, I was thinking it was going to be sometime in 2025. Um, now thinking about it more, I'm thinking 2026, but we will be doing some sort of race in 2025, I think yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely. So we'll be looking at that, uh, when deciding later on. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Moving on from the race courses to the high seas, we received some new details about Disney Cruise Line's next private destination. I wonder if they'll be doing, you know, they have the Castaway Key 5K. I wonder if there'll be a Lookout Key race weekend. Yeah, I don't know. It would make sense that they would have that. Yeah, that'd be know. kind of fun. Yeah. I wonder if they do a uh, two island right. <laughs> medal or something. Yeah, to do right? races that'd be cool. Both of them. That'd be fun. That would be. Anyway, uh, this is from the Disney Parks blog. They say Disney Lookout Key is Disney Cruise Line's newest one-of-a-kind retreat on the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas. As soon as guests step foot on this breathtaking island destination, they will discover a celebration of Bahamian storytelling, artistry, and culture. So we took a look at a few more interesting places yeah. that are coming to this wonderful spot. And they said, let's start with the first look at the arrival point, which is called, and I apologize in advance if I mispronounce (laughs) any of these spots. Um, This is Mabrika Cove. Mabrika means welcome in Taino, the language of the Lucayans. Nice. I don't know if I got any of that right. (laughs) Who are considered the indigenous people of the Bahamas. At this colorful arrival point, guests will immediately experience the warmth of Bahamian culture is what they say. So it looks like a cool spot yeah. just to get off the ship and it be embraced by this warm Bahamian right. culture. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. The next space is guaranteed to be the most festive on the island is what they say. The Goombe Cultural Center will embody the essence of, boy, I'm, I'm totally, <laughs> I apologize if I'm butchering all this. Uh, Jukanu, a Bahamian festival filled with joyous music and vibrant parades that will come to life in many ways across Disney Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point. Agumbe is one of the traditional music styles of the Bahamas involving singing, dancing, and drumming. The brilliantly colored, the brilliantly colored cultural pavilion and its Junkanu inspired arch will invite guests to embrace their traditions of the Bahamas along with the sights, sounds, and spirit of the country's signature festival. Nice. Yeah. I love that they're totally embracing yeah. uh, the Bahamas. Right. This. I think that's really cool. Right. I feel like we saw some documentary about this in the past, and, and, and it really is impressive how much research that they did about the Bahamian culture and art to incorporate that and make this very unique special I'm place. trying to remember, was it, maybe it was... D23 Expo 2019 um, when they were talking about it and how that and um, how that that's what they were looking yeah, to do could to be. It, right. fully embrace right. uh, the Bahamian culture and yeah. they wanted it to, to be this 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 spot to be a celebration of right. that. And right, right, exactly. It seems like that, that 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 goal has been set and they're they're trying their best to meet that. Right. I think that's exciting. Um, there will be plenty of family entertainment in store at Triton's Trumpet Stage, which actually. While, of course, it has meaning within the Disney community mm-hmm. of Triton and, of course, right. the Little Mermaid, um, in, it, this is actually, the gazebo's name is inspired by one of the stunning natural wonders found among the Bahamian beaches, a large spiraled seashell commonly called Triton's Trumpet. So Ooh. it's kind of a little cross-reference there, not only to the Bahamian culture, right. but also to Disney, Disney, which I like. Yeah. You know. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And of course, as they you do, it's Disney. We must mention the shopping opportunities. Uh, the Treasures of Eleuthera will be a retail shop which will feature locally made gifts and artisan crafts. So they're going to have a lot of um, Bahamian artisans right. supplying some nice. of these interesting items that you can purchase while you're there, which yeah, is kind of cool. Yeah, that is exceptionally great. Yeah, I like that. And now the question you might have been asking, is there going to be an adults-only space on the island? Of it's course. Disney Cruise Line. Of course <laughs> there is. They said they're delighted to share that Serenity Bay. So they are going to have a Serenity Bay, not only in Castaway Key, right. a Serenity Bay also on Lookout Key will be a relaxing retreat exclusively for adults 18 years of age or older. For those of you who have sailed with Disney Cruise Line before, you might recognize Serenity Bay as the must visit location on Disney Castaway Key. 
at Disney Lookout Key, Serenity Bay will feature a tranquil beach experience with a dining area and private cabanas available for reservation. Maybe. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yes. If you're Pearl or concierge or get really, really lucky. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but i um, glad that, well, I mean, I, I think we knew that that was going to be in some sure. sort of an adult beach, a family beach, and more of a kid-friendly beach. Right, yeah. As well. It just makes sense. Um, but, you know, it's still good to hear just the Right, same. get the confirmation of yeah. it, yeah. Can't wait to check it all out. We have a cruise still booked uh, for September mm-hmm. of next year. Actually, two cruises back-to-back that we're hoping to hit Lookout Key um, maybe twice. twice. Mm-hmm. Um we were doing it back to back in hopes that in case the weather is a little bit right. dicey that we hit it at least once, right, exactly. but maybe twice. Um, but we're very excited about getting to check it out for ourselves. Yeah, next, yeah, for sure. Next year. Uh-huh. So finally, one more Disney story. Disney has decided to go even more all in on the future of streaming. Ooh, do yeah. tell. Do this, tell, honey. This is really quick, but yeah, I just wanted to let you know, you may have already seen it somewhere on social media. Because this came from a Walt Disney Company press release. The Walt Disney Company announced Wednesday that it will acquire the 33, I don't know if it's 33% or 33 and a third percent, but right. the one third stake in Hulu held by Comcast Corp's NBC Universal. This acquisition of Comcast stake in Hulu at fair market value will further Disney's streaming objective, the, the press release says. Disney expects it will pay NBC Universal approximately $8.61 billion, representing um, NBCU's percentage of the $27.5 billion guaranteed floor value for Hulu. So basically, they just, because of the, the agreement they went into when they kind of went in together on right. this streaming site, um, that you know, they basically would say, you know, this is what the appraiser will say the market value right. is of it. And if anybody wants to purchase it, this is what it'll be. Right. And it comes out to eight point six one billion and um Comcast and NBC Universal have agreed to that sale price. Right, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, at least as a preliminary sale price. Could shift a little bit um later on when the purchase is finally done here. I think it's sometime early this month. Um, but still, um obviously Disney has decided, look, streaming is the future. I think we mm-hmm. all know that's the right. case. We're all in on not only Disney Plus, right. but Hulu for more some of our more adult content. Right. Um, let's go ahead and, and just have it all. Right. So we can not have to kind of split this with anybody else. Exactly. And I think that makes complete sense. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's something that they've kind of been for a while now talking about anyway. So, you know, at least now it's a final decision. Has been yeah. And I think now with NBC Universal looking to um, possibly bring in Warner Brothers right. into the fold for them, right. they need to look for a, a way out of this and into a different right. realm. So it makes sense on both sides. Yeah, sure. And good for everybody. In yeah, this. exactly. For everybody. I think that it seems, you know, when you hear $8.61 billion, that sounds like a lot of money. I think when it's all said and done, especially where it's, because streaming is the future. It's right. the present, but it's also the future. Right, right. Um, at least as far as we know for now. Um, I think it's going to, in in a few years time, it's not going to seem like that much money. Sure. Right. Exactly. So that's great. Yeah. Very so cool. that's it for Disney stories of the week. Oh, Michelle has a Disney well. story and we always save the best for last <laughs> because you know, Michelle always has the best Disney stories of the week. Michelle, what you got for everybody? Well, I just, um, you know, it's, it's not new news. I mean, I think everybody knows new news. it's not new news. I, I think everybody <laughs> does know that, um, over at Epcot, the, the nighttime show is changing. It's going to be luminous, the symphony of us, uh, and that's debuting pretty soon, December 5th. So, um, they, they have released some, some more details about the songs and, and everything that are going to be included in that show, but it, it does seem like it's one that's going to definitely, um, touch the feels for everybody and looking forward to that. But again, it's not much further down the road. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about how quickly each month is, we're already into November, um, you know, it's just, it's actually a month away from today. And that also means that the full opening of Epcot, once again, the walls are coming down soon. Right. I think it's exactly that same time. Mm-hmm. Um, we will have full Epcot. We noticed it on our run yep. that the walls have pushed back. Right. So a good a more space. Oh, I don't know, 10 feet maybe. Right. Um, there's more trees there. We're starting to get that more yes. space. Um, we are close now to having Epcot again um, without the walls. And right. couldn't be happier about that. So 
that's really good. Also, quickly, um, another thing is that um, Asha from Disney's new film that's coming out later this month, Wish, mm-hmm. um, is now greeting guests at Epcot. That's right. So you can get a meet and greet with her, get a photo with her. Right. Um, we got to see her briefly. She made an appearance at Destination D23. Yeah. Fantastic. She looks like she's going to be a lot of fun to, yes. to get a photo with and meet. Um, and that film looks great. So I'm yes. excited for that. Um, and then later on, uh, she'll be coming to Disneyland and Disneyland Paris as well for meet and greets. So right. that's, you can already meet her at Epcot. Uh, it's coming for your chances at these other parks as yeah. well soon. Yeah. So that's really good news right. as well. And it's, it's really fun to have um, these characters coming to Epcot as well. Because again, when we talk about little kids having some better connections with that park. It's great that, the, that they're bringing these characters in. Yep. You know, and Moana recently. And yeah, very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Can't wait to get Epcot back to full force Epcot. I yes. mean, obviously it'll be a little different Epcot than the Epcot from the past, but um, it's going to, I think it's going to be wonderful and beautiful again. And I, I'm very, very excited to have Epcot Without the walls. Right, right. Back again, without the construction <laughs> going on. Again, it's been a long time. It's yes, been a long time. So exactly. That's so that's it for the Disney stories of the week. However, we never leave you without giving you some sort of tip that might help you on your next vacation. And when we do this, we always start with Michelle because she's wonderful. She's amazing. <laughs> she's fantastic. She's a gorgeous Alice in Wonderland. Mm. You know she does the best research. You've heard that in past <laughs> episodes. You've also heard that she has the very best lists. You just heard it. She has the best Disney stories of the week. Well. One thing is for certain, she definitely has the very best tips. So let's get to it. Here is Michelle's tip of the week. All right. So my tip, it's, it's just kind of a little tip here, but um, we know a lot of you enjoy the magic shots that are offered by the Disney Photo Pass service cast members. Uh, and maybe you're looking for certain ones. And there is a way that you can pretty much find out what are the current uh, magic shots being offered at Walt Disney World. There is an official Disney Photo Pass service Facebook page that, that you can go to. And from there, you would click on the Photos tab and after you're there, click on the albums tab and you will see the current magic shots for each park. Um, and if there's special events going on, you'll see what they're offering, that, you know, for like, um, you know, we just had the Mickey not so scary and then we're going to have Dick Mickey's very merry Christmas party. Um, now, things can change, so we don't want you to ever feel like that is exactly right. But uh, it could be a pretty good indication and you could see if there, like I said, if there's a particular character or magic shot that you're looking for, you can kind of hone in on where you're likely to find that by going to the official Disney Photo Pass service Facebook page. Very good. It's very important. I mean, you want to kind of know all that information, especially, you know, when yeah. if you're spending the money, whether you, you know, if you have the annual pass and you spent the money right. to, to add on with the Photo Pass or if it's just your vacation and you've decided, look, it's our family, it's our friends, whatever right. it might be, it's just us. We want all those pictures. You know what you're getting, know what to look out right. for, know what you, you know, so you can get all those cool things. And because those magic shots, especially, they're, they are magic. I right. mean, they're, they're not lying. I mean, right. they're, they're so much fun. We have, we have a, on our cover art for today, we have a magic shot with us in the Cheshire Cat. You right. Know? I mean, it's really cool. Yeah. And in the parks, you, you know, you might not expect some, like, um, Scott and I were there recently and, and got one with Tinkerbell that I wasn't expecting a Tinkerbell shot at Epcot, I guess. I don't, I wasn't thinking about it too much, but it wasn't what I was expecting. It was a nice surprise for sure. But again, maybe you're looking for a particular character. I know Figment is very popular that people are looking for. And, and so maybe in, and a lot of times at Epcot, they have Figment in different poses, different ways. And you might want to see what's something that is more of interest to you, you can, you can get a really good idea of what the current ones are by going to their that's Facebook great, group That's a great page. point. Still my favorite magic shot we ever had <laughs> that involves Scott. 
<laughs> was there was one time, I think we were at the Polynesian and right. he took a few pictures with us, but at some point he was like, I'm done taking pictures right. here. And he kind of moved off to the side and he was kind of like, Fold, his arms folded in yeah. front of him. And the photographer there, thank you for this photographer. Oh, I wish he we was had, amazing. Yeah, yes. I wish we had gotten, remember his, his or her name. I, I don't remember, but um, we had a magic shot with the two of us, but this photographer also captured Scott to the side, right? And put in a magic shot of Orange Bird, like in front of, or like on Scott's on shoulder. shoulder. Yes, and it looks like Scott's like had enough of Orange Bird. <laughs> He's like, I'm not taking any of your shenanigans, Orange <laughs> right. Bird. Right? It's brilliant and hilarious, and it makes me laugh every single time I see it. Right. I think actually that one. Are- also includes hey hey yeah. like you're holding hey hey and I'm looking at that and Scott is just you know side eyeing <laughs> Orange just, Bird with just disgust so done with Orange <laughs> Bird whatever he's doing it's, yeah but that it's that, so great it's that cast best. member was he, I remember it was it was a guy and he was brilliant we didn't know that was going to be we thought it was probably at that point we were told him we're okay if, if Scott's not in the picture yeah. or whatever but he. He was so creative and brilliant. Yeah, if we had been able that. to see that photo at that moment, right. I knew that he did that. We'd have given the, the biggest of cast right. for yes, it because it's yes. brilliant and it's hilarious. Right. I think we've posted somewhere on social media. Maybe we'll do it again at some point. But it is so funny. Right. <laughs> it is so funny to me. <laughs> so yeah, they're great. What about your tip, sweetie? So my tip for this week, and I I, I alluded to it earlier. My tip is simply look. If you've never done a run Disney race, give it a try. Yeah. I I know it's it's hard to look at and think about like, oh, I'm going on my gate my vacation. Why do I want to spend an extra hundred plus dollars to right. go out and wake up at two, three in the morning right. and go run? Why would I want to do that? And we were discussing this with Pat and Kelly when mm-hmm. we were at brunch that right. morning. Like you could do, you know, for the price that you pay for a run Disney race. Yes. In your local community, you could do several races, but they don't compare. Right. They're not the same. Right. And we're not saying that they're bad. There's nothing wrong with those races. They are fantastic races. Some do better than others. We love them. They're great. But there is absolutely nothing, especially as a Disney fan, like the energy, the feeling of running through the Disney parks and just the, the, the love and like I said, energy, I don't know how other way to put it, the aura, whatever you want to call it of positivity that goes through those races. It's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. You may be exhausted later in the day from getting up so early, having to do that race or whatever, but you don't feel it nearly as much as you should when you're out there on the race course because there's that energy supporting you. There's it's it's you can't explain it to anybody who's never done it. Right. So that's why I suggest you try it to find out if it's something right for you. There's a reason why all these people come back and they do it time and time again. Right. There's a reason why we get up and go through those things we were telling you <laughs> earlier. It seems like that. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to put myself through that? Right. It's because that feeling when you're out there, it's like nothing else. Right. It, it really is. It really is fun and unique. And again, doing the 5K, you really don't have to run it. Right. You could walk it, you know, do a, a fairly... Run a little bit. Yeah. Walk or most a, of it. Yeah. Or do a, you know, fairly brisk I walk I think we or did. We weren't in the best shape. No. We had COVID not that... We didn't bring it up on the show, but we've had COVID not that long right. ago. And it really hampered our training significantly. So we kind of did a... I think we were about 50-50. Right. In yeah. This race. Yeah. And, you know, and the other thing too is, I mean... We didn't have concerns stopping. We did another restroom stop. Yeah. We stopped for multiple pictures. Many people were in long lines for right. pictures, and we were near the end and, of the pack. Right, right. Not a problem. And um, yeah, and there were other pic- there were photo pass uh, set up there that we stopped for as well. Um, they're good at getting things through quickly, but still, it, you know, we we had to wait for our turn and, and everything, and it was fine. There was no concerned that oh we weren't going to make it and so yeah don't don't stress that if you're not feeling like you're in the the optimal shape to do a run it 
they call it run Disney, but it, it really, it's, it's not a race, you know, and they don't call it a race. They call it a run. Um, and so don't feel like it's, it's beyond your reach. Yeah. The 5k, they're very lenient right. on how you go about that race. Mm-hmm. A little bit more so in the 10K and right. the, the half marathon. You know, they expect that if you're doing those kind of distances, less, I mean, the, the half marathon, yes. Um, not as much on the 10K, but still a little bit more than, mm-hmm. uh, significantly more than the 5K. But they, they expect you to kind of right. not. It, again, I would suggest you give the 5K a try. Right. See what it feels like for you. If you like it you may want to do more of these. Sure. It happens to right. a lot of people. Right. There's a reason why people are willing to pay so much money and do it over and over again, wake for up sure. so early, do this. Um, but, I mean, you can try it once. It's not for you. It's not for everybody. Right. Totally get it. That's fine. But you'll never know till you try it. Exactly. I highly recommend you give it a shot and see um, what you think about it. And again, you don't need to be a, a four-minute miler. Right, no. No. Take your time. Right. Enjoy it. Have a good time. I'm not saying walk the whole thing, but jog a little bit here, jog a little bit there. Walk most of it. If you're right. not in the shape to run the whole thing, you're going to be fine. Right. Give it a shot. Feel the energy. I think you're going to, I wouldn't be surprised if you love it. Exactly. Like we do. We love it very much. Very much. Now, that's it for this week's show. Next week, well, there's a couple things coming up next week. The Marvels. Right. Right. The new Marvel film is coming out. A couple weeks after that, Disney Wish, the new animated film, is right. coming out. So we thought we want a very interactive show for next week. How could we bring both of those things into the equation? And we kind of thought, how about if we did something about Disney Marvels and Wishes? We'd love to know what in Disney, and I want this to be completely positive because you know that's what we're all about. Right. Don't be snarky out there, okay, people? <laughs> completely positive. What, when you go to Disney, do you marvel at? Right. And what is your wish for the rest of 2023 and on into 2024? Yeah, or what do you wish to do at Disney? Yeah. Like maybe a bucket list kind of item. Right. What are your marvels and wishes? What makes you marvel or what do you feel is the biggest marvel? It could be however you want to interpret it. We're fine for interpretation on this. What are your marvels and wishes? And I think that we would love to get a lot of responses. Right. We're going to talk about ours and we want to talk about yours and celebrate yours as well. That may be something that we were like, didn't think about. Right. Like, you know what? What? That's a great idea. Exactly. Wonderful marvel or a wonderful wish. Right. Right. Yes. And like Tom said, make it interactive. We kind of want this to be your episode. Right. We want, we want to bring everybody in, everybody in. We want to do that every week, but especially this week. Maybe that's our marvel and wish yes. is to bring everybody into that show for sure. As for this week's show, we appreciate that you joined us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. Also, we are on social media. We're on Twitter. X. At Hyperion Adventures Pod, oh, Excuse me. At Hyperion Podcast. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Thread at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us for some good, positive Disney energy fun on our Hyperion Adventures Facebook group. Also, we're on YouTube. If you want to find us there, we're at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, including your Disney Marvel and wishes, uh, we are at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. Right. And if you really want to help support this, show and we appreciate those of you who have already done that uh we have a patreon group and there are some offers of patreon tiers as low as two dollars a month yep and we appreciate everybody who's already joined yes Um, thank you for being a patreon member thank you for anybody who just listens to this show um thank you so much Um, we appreciate you very very much Thank you for listening to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. Bye.